Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I put together 14 of my best coastal Christmas DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So the first um, DIY we're going to do today is the coastal coral Christmas tree I've been telling you guys about. So the first thing we're going to do is we need a base for our Christmas tree. I'm going to use one of these green floral foam wedges from the Dollar Tree. It kind of looks like a tree skirt, right? The shape of it. And it is definitely thick enough, I think, to provide a good base for the coral Christmas tree. Now it is green. I don't really want that to show through anything. And so I'm just going to do a quick coat of like white acrylic paint on this. Now, at first I tried to use like the thinner piece of white circular foam. It wasn't quite thick enough um, from the Dollar Tree, so I switched to this one, and this one worked really well. Um, I just wanted something that I was going to be able to put the stick of the Coral Christmas tree down into that's going to hold it up properly, and this did definitely work. Um, you could always use wood too. You'd have to drill a hole in it though, but... This is kind of a lightweight solution, but it did definitely hold up. Now I'm gonna make the coral Christmas tree. I need like a structure for the middle of the tree. Um, I had some issues trying to figure out which way was the best way to make it. The first time that I did it, I um, used like some of those wood skewers that you use for cooking for the middle of the tree, these things. And it worked until the final piece, and then it was just too um, wobbly. So I'm going to switch it up to one of these metal yard stakes from the Dollar Tree. And I usually um, just take these little wire yard stakes off these anyway, because I usually use the things at the top for other DIYs, which is why I had this Christmas one. It can be any one. But I don't want it to be quite as long as it is, so I want to kind of break it in half. Now, this was a really strong wire. Um, I just used my pliers and carefully like went back and forth until I can get that to break off. <laughs> if you had some really strong wire cutters, they might work, but that's what I want is a really strong base for the tree. And so this worked really well. I just didn't want it to be quite as tall as the yard stake itself was. Um, so there is the base for our coral Christmas tree. Now I did make a Christmas wreath out of these little coral looking Christmas tree ornaments from the Dollar Tree and I loved how it turned out and you guys did too. So I wanted to make a Christmas tree version. I thought that would be really fun. So just putting the wire down in the center of our foam circle, we can start building our Christmas tree. I love these ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I get these every year. I try to stock up on them because I use them year round because they kind of look a little bit like coral. So this is what we've got going on right here for the structure. It's okay that the base is not painted great because we are going to make a little skirt and stuff on there. I was still a little bit worried about the stability of it though, so to make sure that it stays in there, I'm just going to put a little hot glue down into the foam as well to make sure this is rock solid. Now, my plan is to, you know, put the coral ornaments down on there. It's going to kind of balance it out like um, weight wise all the way around the directions but these are the ornaments that I use they are like white glitter they're made out of plastic they're easy to work with and they have a little hole here for the ornament hanger and that's what we're going to use to attach it and then we're just going to break the stem off each one which is like the tree trunk and easy to break with your fingers because it's made out of plastic and my my plan is just to slide these on see how it's like the perfect width like that um, instead of using zip ties. So I kind of need um, an area for it to stop. 
um, because I don't want to go all the way down, down to the bottom of the tree. And I also don't want you to be able to see like this black wire in the middle. So I'm going to kind of paint like a section at a time um, with just a little white to make that blend in a little bit. Only doing a section at a time because um, when I put those down in there, it would scrape the paint off. And then just a dot of hot glue to give um, something like to stop on when I'm sliding that down the Christmas tree. So this is our first piece of coral. Gonna slide it down until I get to that hot glue. That's also gonna help glue that in place. And then we're just gonna start building. Um, I um, already had the trunk broke off of a bunch of these because I tried to make this the first time with the uh, skewer. So I'm just gonna do a dot of hot glue in between the pieces and I'm gonna slide the next piece of coral down onto it like that. And these are gonna be like the branches of our Christmas tree. So a dot of hot glue, I'm gonna slide the next piece and I'm gonna keep going all the way around the bottom layer of the Christmas tree until we get this full. I end up using five ornaments. So you get two in a package. So um, I'll try to keep track of how many we used here today. And that is what it looks like right now. They're all just kind of spiraled on top of each other, but it looks really cool because it looks like a bottom of a branch of a Christmas tree. So I'm gonna just paint a couple inches of that wire again, and then do a dot of hot glue again so we can do another layer of our Christmas tree. And we're gonna use the, the same size here, and we're just gonna do another row of the Christmas tree. We will make them a little shorter as we go up the tree to give it that Christmas tree shape. So we have our second row started. Just touching up the paint a little bit there. A dot of hot glue and we're gonna slide it down and we're gonna just keep doing that, going all the way around with those little coral branches. I love these ornaments, they're, so, they're my favorite for sure. My stores have been restocking them, so if you haven't been able to find them, try again. And so we're gonna go ahead and do five for this row too. It's exactly like the bottom row. We did five full pieces of the coral ornaments. So we're up to 10 so far. So we're gonna keep building the Christmas tree until we get to the top of the wire. So that's what it looks like at this point. The hot glue between the pieces helps um, keep it um, open otherwise the pieces would kind of like just all fall around i want them to kind of stay stationary and so again um i painted the wire and put some hot glue but this one i want to shorten it a little bit and since these are plastic they're pretty easy to break i'm just going to try to break these off a little bit shorter so i'll just have a shorter piece of coral but i'll still have the ornament hanger on there and a dot of hot glue, and we're gonna just start building them like that. That's gonna give it that like triangular shape, the Christmas tree shape, by having the branches towards the top of the Christmas tree shorter. And we're just gonna fill this in as well. Just a dot of hot glue in between each piece. And at first I thought that maybe four was enough on this one, but I do go back and end up doing five like I did on the other one. So we're up to 15 ornaments so far for a Christmas tree. I tried to make this with as little ornaments as I could, um, cause I know sometimes they can be hard to find. So I just paint the wire again, do another dot of hot glue, and we're gonna make these even a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna go about halfway up the ornament and break them. If you can't break them, you can cut them with scissors too, but I almost find it easier to break them with my hands and cut them with the scissors. And this is going to be like kind of our top set of branches for the Christmas tree. And I don't think it's going to require quite as many. We're going to do four here. So that takes us up to 19. And I end up doing one more on the top. So that's a total of 20. So you're going to need 10 packages of these Christmas tree ornaments from the Dollar Tree. Now the one for the top, I'm just gonna do it like, you know, like the top of a Christmas tree, a nice branch pointing straight up like that. And just glue that on to uh, the metal wire that's left there that I did paint white because I want it to kind of blend in. 
So there will be a front to the tree. I thought about doing two back to back so there wouldn't really be a back, but the white bar does blend in well with the coral. You can't really tell it. And we have a Christmas tree. Now the only thing I didn't really like was the wire in between each Christmas tree. I didn't think it looked that full. So I do have all those extra pieces of coral from when I broke off the ones in half and stuff like that. And I thought I would use some of those to like fill in the areas in between the different rows of the branches. I might, have, might as well use them since I have them and it's gonna give it a little bit more coral fun. I've been wanting to make a coral Christmas tree all season so I'm so glad that I finally got it put together. Now, if yours don't fit, you can always break them down to size. I'm just gonna try to piece this together and just like the top branch, I'm just gonna glue that on to the middle bar kind of all facing this same direction, which is kind of the front. This one doesn't really fit, so I'm just gonna cut it and trim it down until it does. And we're just gonna glue those. I'm not gonna do it on the very bottom that goes into the foam, but I'm gonna do it on all the different levels of the Christmas tree between each set of branches. And again, we're still at 20 ornaments because I'm just using the scrap pieces. Now, I was thinking about how I could decorate this Christmas tree. I was thinking about doing a starfish at the top, but I really love the simplicity of the coral. So I didn't want to go too crazy with the directions. You can decorate your coral Christmas tree however you want. But I thought we would do something really simple with this because I just love how it's looking so far. The first thing we're going to do is make a tree skirt. I'm going to use some of this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and just wrap that around the base. The base was already shaped like a tree skirt, right? And so I am um, just going to cut off a piece big enough to go all the way around. And we're just going to glue that around. That way I painted, you know, the base kind of white so it won't really show through this since it does have holes in it. And just do a very simple tree skirt. It might be easier to do this before you start building it, but I still have a little bit of room to work there. It's just kind of hard to show you. I just glued it together on the back and we have a little tree skirt for our tree. Now there is a little bit of room in there and I thought it would be pretty to fill that up a little bit. And so I got some of that white sparkly um, fake snow from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to sprinkle that inside the tree skirt so it kind of looks like there's like a layer of snow underneath. And again, um, it might be easier to do this before you build the tree. That way you can kind of glue it down. But I'm just going to sprinkle a little layer of the faux snow in there. And we can start decorating our Christmas tree. I wanted to decorate the coral Christmas tree in seashells because... Um, I thought that'd be really pretty. I'm going to use seashells from the Dollar Tree. I really like these. They come in those little teeny tiny bottles at the Dollar Tree. And they're the white with the brown stripe or the brown spots, I guess. And I'm just going to kind of put the glue those all around the branches at different like depths. Like they're like alive, like they're like little snails or whatever, like crawling on the coral and they've attached at different random spots. I do um, do almost one for every single branch. Every row I like skipped a random branch just to make it look a little bit more random. But we're just gonna just keep gluing those all around, sometimes towards the end, sometimes in the middle, just kind of randomly spacing those out. And I love um, that it's not, I'm not really adding any color to it. I really like the simplicity of the white with a little bit of the brown coming in there. And that's basically all I'm going to do to decorate the coral Christmas tree. I'm not going to do any ribbons. I'm not going to do a starfish at the top. I just really liked the simplicity of this. And everybody in my family loved it. My husband's like, you could sell that for a lot of money. <laughs> and let me show you how it turned out. Our little coral Christmas tree. I love it. I love, love, love it. And let me give you a closer look of our little coral Christmas tree here. 
And here she is. I love that I left it white glittery. It's very shimmery for um, Christmas. And I love the little shells all over. They're so simple, but so fun. And I've also made a Christmas tree out of these that I actually put on a sign in a recent video that turned out really cute as well. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. And today we have a crafty beach giveaway. I'm going to be giving away 20 of these coral shaped ornaments later on in the video. So stay tuned to find out how to enter. Okay guys, next DIY. I found this piece of driftwood at the beach the other day and I thought we can make this into reindeer. <laughs> so it's a pretty long piece of driftwood. You can use whatever you've got. If you don't have any driftwood, you could always use just some weathered sticks from your yard. And we're gonna start cutting this down. I'm just gonna cut it with my saw. I'm gonna cut three small pieces like that. And then those are gonna be the heads and we're gonna do three reindeer and then three like medium sized pieces and that's gonna be like the reindeer body. We're gonna use these little wood dowels from the Dollar Tree. There's 15 in a package and I think I used all but one. Um, and these are gonna be like the legs and the necks of our reindeer. And I thought we could really build some really cute reindeer. I'm also gonna use those little ornament uh, antlers from the Dollar Tree. Now I thought the dowels were a little bit long for reindeer legs um, for the size I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go to my saw and cut them all down at once. But if you have like the miter scissors or some strong scissors, you can always cut these as well without a saw. So I cut them down just a little bit to size until I thought they'd be great size for legs. And I have 12 of them because I'm gonna do three reindeer. Now I really want these, these to kind of blend in with the driftwood. So I kind of want to give it that driftwood feel. To get that, I am going to mix some Antique Wax by Waverly with some ivory paint. And we're just going to go over and stain all of these with that color, kind of wiping off the excess with a paper towel until I kind of have like a, a light wood stain that's going to kind of blend in more with the driftwood. Now, I also um, need the necks, and so I'm gonna have to cut some more pieces. I need like three smaller pieces for the necks of our reindeer. So I cut these down to size, and we're gonna do the same stain treatment on them, that lightened driftwood color. And just basically trying to stain the wood. Now to give it a little bit of variation in color, I am gonna dry brush over some Antique Wax by Waverly to give a very slight like wood grain to those to give that that final punch of driftwood. Okay, I think those are looking pretty good. So we can start putting our little driftwood reindeer together. I got like one of my biggest drill bits. It's about a little bit bigger than those dowels. And I'm just gonna start drilling some holes in our driftwood um, for leg holes so that I can have somewhere to put the legs in there. Just trying to do it deep enough um, so that I can glue those in there fairly securely like that. And that's gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and do four. Now, um, you're also gonna need a hole for the neck on the other side. I wish I would have done it at this point. Um, it would just make it a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna do a dot of hot glue in each one of those holes and put our little reindeer legs on there. I thought about using a little bit of hot glue on those legs to make them look a little bit knottier, but I ended up just doing them as is and they turned out really cute. So it's okay if they're not perfect because you can make your like reindeer be standing like in any position, but before your hot glue dries, you might wanna straighten them out a little bit. So we have the body of our first one and this one's kind of a weird shape. I'm gonna kind of do the curve on the bottom and just kind of driftwood is not supposed to be perfect, right? So just kind of wherever I can fit the little holes here for the lakes. And I'm drilling those in. Had to break out the power tools for you. I'm actually doing these DIYs in Hurricane Nicole. We were lucky enough to only lose power two times briefly. And so um, I did have pounding on the outside of my 
garage door while I was doing this because I do craft in my garage and um, uh, this was a nice distraction uh, away from the hurricane but I know I have a lot of Floridians that are crafty beach bums and I really hope that you guys made it through the storm safely. So we have our second reindeer built and here is the third. This piece is a little skinnier but that's okay. I want all the reindeer to be unique. So we're going to go ahead and drill four holes and hot glue on all four legs. And we have the bodies of all three of our reindeer built. These were so much fun to put together. They're so cute. There we go. Now we can start working on our little reindeer head. So I cut these pieces down a little bit shorter. So I'm going to drill a hole in each one of those for like the neck, which is those shorter dowel pieces that I cut out. Kind of towards the end. Sometimes this driftwood like drills a little too easy because it's soft from the weathering, but sometimes they're really hard. It kind of depends on what kind of wood it is. Just trying to go deep enough so I can glue that in there pretty securely. And then just like the legs, we're going to do a dot of hot glue and we're going to glue those little wooden dowels into the little reindeer heads. This one that's real kind of gnarly looking is like was my favorite one. <laughs> and so this is where I should have kind of drilled these holes in advance because I ended up having to kind of hold them and drill them. Probably be safer to drill those in advance when you're drilling the holes for the legs. But we're just going to do a, um, a hole in each end where the neck would come out of the top of the body there of the reindeer. And we can start putting these little guys together. Now, I also want them to have antlers. I got some of these. Um, there are six in a package, so I really only needed one package. I don't know why I'm opening two. I think I was kind of seeing if there was a left or a right, but they're all kind of exactly the same. And they're like white glittery, glittery little deer antlers. And I thought we could drill some holes in our little head here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use that same size drill bit and drill some holes for the antlers. Um, on the other side of its head, trying to get them fairly even. And I thought that the little um, branch to stick down in there um, was a little too long because when I go to glue them down in there, you can kind of still see that. So I'm just going to cut the little tip of these off about halfway um, to make them fit down in there nicer. And then hot glue those in. Now these are actually like kind of like deer antlers and not necessarily reindeer antlers. And I really want these to look like reindeer. So I'll show you what I do here in a minute. First I, I just glue them on like that. But then I thought what if I like glue them on upside down like this. That's going to make them look more like reindeer like I think. Than if I did them the straight way up and down. And so that's how I end up gluing them just on there upside down, kind of going out to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other head, the heads before I go ahead and attach those to the body of a reindeer by drilling two holes in the top of each one of them. And then we're just going to trim off the rest of these little antlers and we're going to put them all together. This is so much fun and like some of them are split and super weathered, but it's just going to add more charm and character to these little driftwood pieces. And there we go. We have all of our little reindeer heads. We're ready to put the body completely together here. And I had already drilled the holes there. So for the neck, and I'm just going to put some hot glue in there. And we're going to glue these on. This is the step where you can really kind of give them personality. They can be like leaning their heads any direction you want. I'm going to do them like fairly straightforward like that. Making sure that I hold them until they dry a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and do that with the other two reindeer as well. I'm not going to decorate these too much. I thought about making some little scarves for them, but I kind of liked them better without. I do add a little detail here in the end, but I'm not going to do eyes or anything like that. I just want them to look very rustic, very coastal. 
Now this one was my favorite. I love the way that the driftwood looks. It looks like it has like a youngish like snout. And so I decided to make this one my Rudolph out of the bunch. I asked my son, what was something creative like BTI I could do for like a Rudolph nose? And um, I'll show you what he came up with. I love getting suggestions from him. He has such good ideas. But this is how the little cutie looks so far. If you don't have any wood at all, you could also use those wood stems from the Dollar Tree and glue a couple together for the body. You could kind of get the same look, kind of effect. But I love the fact that these are just made from driftwood that I just found at the beach. So there's reindeer number one, reindeer number two, and reindeer number three, which is my favorite because I kind of think it looks like he has kind of a cool little snout going on there. And his antlers are a little astray, which I kind of like too. So my son's idea for the Rudolph nose was to take one of these little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon and paint one red. And so that's what I did. I just grabbed one of those and used my red paint pen and painted that and glued that on to the top, the tip of my Rudolph nose. I lost some footage there in the storm. But this is how it turned out, our little starfish nose. And that was a great idea. I loved it. And this is how it turned out, our little driftwood reindeer. You could do as many of these as you want. You could have like a whole bunch of them like pulling a sleigh. You could just leave them out for random decor like this. I think they're so sweet. What do you guys think? I love them. And I have so much fun trying to put a coastal spin on all of these Christmas DIYs for you. So I really hope you enjoy them. I love to do coastal for every season, as you know. Okay, let's do another DIY. This one's gonna be a coastal rope angel. So I'm using some of this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, one of these monkey um, jute balls from the Dollar Tree. They're called like monkey knot balls or something like that. And I am going to make an angel with one of those foam cones from the Dollar Tree. So they're not that big, the foam, foam cones from the Dollar Tree. And so I think they're gonna be a perfect size though. I'm just gonna start by gluing the brown rope around the base of the cone. And we're just gonna basically cover the entire cone with rope, like you were doing a like rope Christmas tree. Basically the same thing. Now, when you put hot glue on the foam, it does melt, but I only really had to glue the bottom row, so it was okay. But you could always put like masking tape down or something if you didn't want that to happen. I'm just winding that as tightly as I can around, but one package is not enough. Whenever you're winding rope around stuff like this, it always takes way more than you think. So I'm definitely gonna need to use two packages of rope to cover the body of our coastal angel we're doing here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I made sure that I ended the rope um, the same place that I started the first rope so that can kind of be the back of my angel. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue to start a second piece. And then when you get towards the end, you do have to hot glue it a little bit to itself and to the foam cone. And I'm just gonna cut off a piece and just keep wrapping until I cover up all of the cone. That way I can glue the head to the rope and not the foam cone itself. For the head, I'm gonna use one of these little um, jute balls from the Dollar Tree. And um, I think that's gonna be the perfect top. Now I'm just gonna kind of clean this up with my lighter, kind of burn off all the fuzzies on the rope cone and the rope ball. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that loop on there. At first I was gonna cut it off, but then I was like, that would be the perfect halo for an angel. So I'm gonna leave it on and I'm just gonna have to glue it on where that's gonna need to be in the right place that I can make it into an angel for our, our halo for our angel. So I'm just gonna, Hot glue that on, trying to leave time for it to dry because I don't want this falling off. Trying to secure that as much as possible. I also wanted to do a little lace trim and I found some of this white lace crochet at the Dollar Tree. And I thought we can make just like a little collar for the angel. And that's gonna help reinforce keeping the head on this because I don't want it to fall apart. So I just cut a piece of that lace crochet and we're gonna hot glue that to both 
the head and the body of our angel. And that's just going to help reinforce it, but it's also going to give a little decorative touch here to the top of our angel. I thought about making her a gown out of burlap, but I ended up deciding just to leave it as is. I really like the simplicity of the rope for the body. Now, I want the top of that to look like a halo. Right now, it's sticking up like a big loop, right? So I thought if I use some of this wire jute from the Dollar Tree, we can make this where we could shape it. And that's going to blend in with the rope, so you're not going to be able to see it too much. <clears throat> And I cut a piece to size and I'm just hot gluing that to that loop so that we can um, shape this into a halo. I probably should have cut it a little bit longer because it didn't really sit down as far as I wanted. So I just cut off another piece of um, that wire jute to finish off the circle. Just glued that to itself and that helped me bend it down a little bit so it's not sticking like straight up like a circle. I want it to look like a little halo like above its head and that worked just gluing that all together a little bit there in the back and we have a halo for a little rope angel I think it's so cute so far now the only thing we have left to do is we need angel wings and you'll see that I have some of those gnome stockings from the Dollar Tree I love the white fluffy beard and I thought that would look feathery kind of like angel wing like and so that's the fabric I'm going to use. If you don't have any of these, you could also use like those little microfiber mop heads from the Dollar Tree, but those are a little bit messier to work with. Whatever you've got, you can make angel wings with. It's just going to need to be shaped like an angel wing. I'm just using my heat gun to uh, take the beard off. I love to buy these at Christmas time because I love to make gnomes with these. They're the perfect gnome beards and so easy. Um, be careful though, as you can see, if you get your um, heat gun too close to that fabric, it just melts. <laughs> so I'm just going ahead and pulling both of those off. I only want the beard. I don't want anything else. And we have two pieces of white fur that I think are going to be perfect for angel wings. I just need to shape them up a little bit. So I just went online and tried to look like a angel wing shape up. And we're just going to try to sketch that out. Um, I always have trouble trying to make the angel wing shape, but it really wasn't that hard. I just kind of <clears throat> looked at it and like, I'm just going to use a Sharpie to kind of freehand that angel wing shape onto one of them and just using my fabric scissors to trim that out. And I think that looks pretty good, like an angel wing shape. Now I'm just gonna need a mirror image of that for the other side. So using that one as a template, I'm just gonna sit it on like back to back like that. So it'll be a reverse image. And again, just using my Sharpie to draw on the back, a little pattern. I'm using most of the beard. It's gonna be a nice a large angel wing for both sides and then trim that piece out as well. And we're gonna have a set of angel wings. I was having a hard time figuring out what I was gonna use for the wings for this, but this just worked perfect. I even thought about using some of those coral ornaments, but I didn't really think it was gonna give me that angel um, wing look. So now we just need to attach this to the back of our little coastal angel. I'm just gonna attach it to hot glue with hot glue here on the back and kind of overlap those a little bit. Peeling off any like hot glue on the back that's going to be, you know, visible from when um, it was glued onto the stocking. And now at this point, it's pretty, but the only thing is, is they're a little too floppy. They don't really want to stand up and out like I want them to for angel wings. So I'm going to need to shape that a little bit more. I'm going to use some, some more of that wired jute from the Dollar Tree that we use to make the angel stand up. And we're also going to use that to make the angel wings like stand out. I'm just going to gl uh, glue that onto the back of our angel wing so um, you don't really see it. But this actually worked really well. And I did lose a little bit of footage. Again, I was doing this in Hurricane Nicole. So we did have some power outages. So I'm just gluing that all around, kind of bending it as I go. 
And this was just a loose piece of this I had, but it was actually long enough to um, go around and see how it makes the angel wing like stand up. It is definitely strong enough for this. If you made your wings out of something else, you might need to not need this step. But again, a mine were just a little bit floppy at this point. And so they just needed a little bit of structure. So I'm just going to hot glue that all around the edges of our second wing here. And I wanted to get this video out to you guys. That's why I was crafting during the hurricane. Because I know a lot of you guys were waiting for that coral Christmas tree. And we're just going to go up and finish it here in the back. I just kind of did like a figure eight pattern on those. And that was the perfect final touch because now my angel wings stand out perfectly on the sides. I thought about adding a seashell or something to the front, but I really like the simplicity of her. And so I left her as is. That little bit of trim around her neck was a perfect decorative touch. And here is our little coastal robe angel in all her glory. I think she's so pretty. I know I have a lot of angel fans out there, so I hope you enjoy this DIY. I absolutely love her. She's so fun and really neutral for Christmas. Okay, are you guys ready for a, another coastal Christmas DIY? This time we're doing a sign. We're going to make a shell tree and I wanted to make it into a sign. So I'm using two of these wood signs from the Dollar Tree um, and we're going to put them together to make a larger sign, which I love doing with the Dollar Tree signs. And I love that they are, you know, just plain wood so I can make this really beautiful. Now, they are a little bit warped as Dollar Tree signs can be. And so to make sure they are flat and lined up perfectly we're just going to make some structure on the back with just some dollar tree popsicle sticks i am just going to hot glue those onto the back and um i'm going to add a lot of them just every couple inches to make sure it lines up everything's square everything's flat and it's going to give me a great base to work with and it's going to definitely keep these two signs together so that looks good like that we can flip this over and we can start painting it. I want to paint it, but I also kind of want to stain it because I really want that wood look to sh shine through. I'm going to mix half Caribbean blue, half ivory together. It gives me this really light beachy blue. If you want to just have a color that that's that color, there is an apple barrel paint at Walmart that's called Cloudless that's really similar to this color. And we're just going to go over and do like a sloppy coat all over just to cover the front of our sign. I want to cover the sign with seashells to make it look like a Christmas tree. So once I get it all on there, I'm just going to go over that with a paper towel. It's going to wipe that down into the grain. And so you can still see that pretty wood grain. It's almost giving me like a stain effect instead of a painted effect. And I am having to get the paint out of the holes here at the top because it did kind of blend down in there a little bit. But it gave me a nice beachy uh, distressed look without really having to distress it anymore because I have the wood grain. Now these are just Dollar Tree shells. I just picked out scallop shells that were all kind of the same color scheme and size. And we're going to do one, two, three, four, and then five on the final row and um, kind of build a Christmas tree here out of seashells. So easy. You could do this with any kind of shells. I really thought the scallop shell looked really pretty for this. Then for the bottom of the sign, I thought it would be nice to have a word. I'm going to use some of these galvanized metal Christmas words. For this one, um, I'm going to use the word peace. It fits on here perfectly. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it that galvanized metal. I'm not going to paint it. I think that looks really nice for a coastal finish as well. And so it's time to just start putting this DIY together. For the scallop shells, I am going to use, just use hot glue. I'm going to put glue along the base of it and then just the top rim. And that way I can like attach it with the side. Just trying to make sure I keep it in a straight line. Um, just kind of spacing those out. The center one kind of in between the two signs, so I know that that's centered nicely. 
they're not all the same size and you know some of them are broken and that's okay because it kind of adds to the coastal feel and we're just going to keep gluing these on one row at a time trying to keep my rows relatively even and the spacing relatively even between the different shells and we're going to keep building this up i do want a little bit of space left at the top because i want to do like a starfish for the star tree topper on our little Christmas tree. And this DIY was so easy to put together and it's so pretty. So I'm just gonna use one of those Shore Living a white plastic starfish from the Dollar Tree. You can use whatever you have. I stock up on these all year um, when they come out in the spring, summer. And then piece at the bottom, but I do want it to have like a tree trunk. So I'm just gonna use some of this driftwood filler that I get at Target. I picked out a very small flat piece of that. I thought that would be a really cute little a Christmas tree trunk. So first we're gonna hot glue that here where the two signs come together. And that leaves me just enough room for that little peace sign for the bottom, which I think is the perfect final touch for this DIY. Just using very thin strokes of hot glue on there. I don't want any really seeping out when I glue that on. And I don't have any problem hot gluing the metal on. It's just that you have to kind of work quickly and get that on there right away. And then I just need to make a new hanger. I'm going to use some of this brown and white baker's twine that I got at the Dollar Tree. And just kind of feed that through from the back. Um, I did have a little bit of paint still in the hole, so just cutting off the end that got any paint on there. I like to tie mine on the front. I find that it hangs straighter against the wall when I have it tied in the front whenever I do a rope hanger. I'm just going to leave the holes um, for the other two signs together um, open like that. I think it looks fine, and this is how it turned out. Our little seashell Christmas tree sign. So easy and so beachy. I think it's so cute. You could put a little lights in there if you wanted to drill some holes in the back as well. That would be really cute. But this is how it turned out. It's simple. It's beachy. It's that beachy blue stained wood with our seashells. It's shaped like a Christmas tree. And I really think this would look good with just about any kind of seashells. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know that I've introduced memberships here on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos and you can cancel anytime. It's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. Okay, here is another DIY. I picked up some of these flip-flop signs from the summer aisle, but you know what? This is a pretty easy shape to replicate if you can't find these, but I had them, so we are going to use them. They are really kind of on the large size, but I think that's okay. And they're actually just going one direction. So one I'll have to have upside down. So I'm just gonna take the tag off this one. That way I can have a pair of flip flops for Santa. And I thought it'd be really fun to try to decorate them like I would think Santa flip flops would look. So I have a couple of stockings that I have in my gnome stash because I always try to stock up on these every Christmas at Dollar Tree because they work great for gnomes. Um, one of them is actually a gnome stocking. Those work really good for um, making gnomes year round. And this one's got like a fur on it, but basically all I'm looking for is the back. So if you cut all the way over to the sides of a stocking from the Dollar Tree, you're gonna have enough fabric to cover a flip-flop. So I grabbed two of the stockings from my gnome stash, and I'm just gonna cut all the back off. It's not like a really plush red, fabric, but I think it will work. If you didn't have any of this, any kind of red fabric is really going to, I think, give you about the same effect. Um, you might have trouble finding paper big enough to cover these because they are pretty large, but as you can see, it just covers the flip-flops. So I wanted to make like red plush flip-flops for Santa with like white fur like straps. I thought that would really remind me of Santa Claus. So I'm just going to use a Sharpie. And I'm just gonna draw on my stocking so I'll know exactly where to cut it out. As you can see, you really have to get all of that fabric off the back of the stocking because there really isn't like a lot that I'm cutting off here. So once I draw that on there, I can just go in with my scissors and cut this out. 
One side is going to be covering, um, you know, the back of the flip flop. The other side is going to be covering the glitter stuff. And as you can see, I've already got glitter on this because, you know, the Dollar Tree glitter stuff like gets kind of everywhere. Now, I was thinking I could just glue that on and it would probably be OK, but I wasn't so sure because that's like really bright and busy behind it. And I thought you might be able to see some of that pattern come through and it might like kind of run it in the final project when I have it all Mod Podged on. So I thought I probably should try to mask that first. So I'm just gonna go in with just some ivory paint and I'm kind of just doing a rough coverage of all the stuff that's going on here on the front of that. I'm not really gonna worry about the glitter and stuff on the sides. I think that will be fine, but I just didn't want any of that image like shining through so the other one will be even easier because we're just going to cover the back of this one and so i put that side down and draw this one out just like i did before and we have a more fabric for our flip-flop i thought it would be really cool just to do like a pair of santa's flip-flops make it into like a simple little beach sign. I love decorating coastal for Christmas. You guys know I always do. So I wanted these projects to be projects that I can also use at Christmas time, but I can also use them for Christmas in July decorations. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you actually celebrate Christmas in July or if you just like getting Christmas ideas early. <laughs> I can say that I never really did Christmas in July until um last year i kind of learned about it a little bit i put out a video so um i'm kind of going for it this july why not i love having a holiday to decorate for so now it's just a matter of attaching my stockings to the flip-flop sign so i'm gonna do a pretty thick layer of a mod podge here all over my flip-flop and then just sit that fabric right on top the great thing is, is that stocking material is like a felt, so it cuts really easily. You're not going to have any fraying or anything like that. So it just helps the DIY go a lot smoother. So that's our first one. I have my paint dry on this one so I can go in, Mod Podge all over the top of this one, and glue this one on as well. Now we're going to use those same stockings that we used um, to cover the flip-flops for the white fur for the straps of the flip-flops. I thought I could take that little gnome beard and kind of transform that because I didn't have like any stockings that had like the white fluff on the top or any like um, Santa hats or anything like that to get the white fluff from. So I thought we could just use this beard. Now the beard is hot glued down kind of all the way around. And if you're careful with a heat gun, you can get it off pretty well. I mean, if you didn't want to remove it first, you could probably um, still try to make this work, but I think it's gonna be easier to cut the strips down if I just completely remove this off of the stocking first. As you can see, there's like maybe two rows of hot glue gluing this down. And you kind of have to be careful using heat on this because that like fabric um, that the stocking's made out of will probably melt. So this is what I have, and I'm just gonna kind of take advantage of the shape of it. I think both outside edges here are gonna make great straps. If I can cut it right down the middle and then just cut a little strip off each side like that. And I think that's gonna work. I think I made one a little bit thicker than the other one. So I'm gonna kind of trim that one up to make those even. And that can be the long part of my flip-flop. And the flip-flop sign kind of has a little bump out there so you know exactly where like the straps of the flip-flop should go. So I think that's gonna work great for the um, longer part. So now what I'm left with is a smaller piece, but I can kind of do the same thing with this one because the inside strap is gonna be a little bit shorter. So I just cut off the outside again like that. And we have the like shorter inside straps. Now there was a little bit of area that didn't have fluff on it. So I do kind of trim these as I attach them, but I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to attach my, my little strap to the side and the same thing here at the top. These were so fun to put together. It's so easy, but I think it made a really fun, large, 
um, Christmas project. And I can't wait to display these um, for Christmas and July. And I'll, I'm sure I'm going to display them for Christmas too, because they turned out so cute. So I just glue this strap down with hot glue too, kind of slightly overlapping that at the end. Try not to get too much hot glue outside the area that I'm working there, trying to clean that up a little bit. And you could kind of, you know, hang these like individually. I'm going to put them together on a sign to kind of make it just one project that I can hang on my wall. And I was thinking like flip flops like on a boardwalk would be really kind of um, remind me of Christmas at the beach. And so that's what we're going to do with this one. So it's just a matter of attaching the straps here. I, I kind of like um, make them look like real flip flops where they're is a little bit excess material. They're kind of arched up a little bit before I just glue the ends in place. Like where Santa could really slip his feet in there maybe. <laughs> Santa must have really big feet because these are big. Now for this sign, I'm just gonna use two of like the wood grain long signs. Doesn't matter which ones you have. These are from 4th of July, but doesn't matter because I'm gonna cut the cutout part off anyway. I just want two boards and I needed them to be fairly large because my flip flops are so big. So I took those to my saw and I just cut the cutout part off and I have two boards that remind me of a boardwalk. So um, together, I mean, they're not big enough, but I can leave a gap in between like a boardwalk would be anyway. And then just attach my flip flops like that. So I think that's going to work. I'm just going to leave them that like raw wood color. I mean, that's what a boardwalk would look like at the beach anyway. So one step saved. I'm going to just attach them with hot glue here at the top and the bottom. Now, this is going to secure the two bottom boards together, but I will reinforce those a little bit to make this a little bit stronger. But for now, that's going to kind of join the project together. So I'm attaching these to that board, but these are actually helping to brace the two boards together too. And then we're gonna do the same thing here with flip-flop number two. And then I'm just gonna use popsicle sticks to reinforce this on the back, just to make it a little bit stronger. And I'm just gonna do it behind the flip-flop so you won't be able to see this from the front, it won't be visible. Kind of like a little hidden extra support. And I just use hot glue to attach all four of those. Now I was trying to think about how I could hang it. It does have two hanger holes at the top of the flip flops. So I thought I would take advantage of that. So I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree twine. And since I'm going through fabric and stuff, I thought it might be easier to use like a large needle. And so that's what I'm gonna do and tie a knot in the twine and kind of pull it through. The holes were kind of large, so I did knot it a couple times to try to make sure that it is wide enough that it won't slip through. Now, I'm not sure why I knotted them in the back like this. It hung okay, but it did not hang fantastic. And so after I got that on there, I decided to kind of switch that out. But this is what it looks like for right now. Isn't it cute? A big pair of Santa flip-flops for Christmas in July. Love it. And this is where I was like, you know, I don't know why I did it like that. So I'm just going to cut it, knot it, pull it through and kind of come back the other direction because I know better. Whenever I knot things in the front, it always turns out so much better, like hanging against my wall with these thin signs. So I just pull it through and knot it again and problem solved. And here is our giant pair of Santa flip-flops. I thought about adding some words or a sign to it, but I really kind of like the simplicity of them. I think they turned out really cute. And they look just like something that Santa Claus would wear <laughs> at the beach. <laughs> we have a lot of people live around here that kind of look like Santa Claus sometimes. It makes me wonder. <laughs> I guess I better be nice to him if I know what's good for me. Okay, the next DIY, I'm using another summer sign. This is the surfboard sign from the Dollar Tree. So if you're able to find one or you have one in your stash, you're one up. But again, this shape is not too hard to replicate. But I wanted to do a surfboard Santa sign. 
I do want to cover it with um, some scrapbook paper. And I was able to find this great glitter scrapbook paper at Dollar Tree. And it is large enough to cover this entire surfboard. So that's a win-win. So I just lay it on the back and use the structure of the surfboard and an ink pen to draw that on there. And I think this blue glitter is going to look really pretty on there. It's not like a tacky um, glitter. It's kind of real subtle. And I think it's going to look really pretty with my coastal decor. The other colors in there, there was a green one in there that would work too if you didn't want to do blue for your Christmas in July. And so now it's just a matter of attaching it. It's kind of a thick paper, so I think it's going to be fine just to go over like the glitter words and stuff that's on there. Um, I don't think you'll be able to tell in the final project. So I just do a nice coat of Mod Podge all over the front of it and then just lay our little glitter cardstock right here on top. And we have a little blue glitter surfboard. Then I wanted to add words to mine um, to kind of make it a cute little Santa Claus sign. So I went to my Cricut and I cut out some words to put on the sign. And I will share all of my Cricut files below if you want to recreate. The vinyl that I use is this matte white vinyl. I get this on Amazon. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I love it. And I've been using it all of the time. So what I have it say is gone to the beach, love Santa. So this would be a really fun little sign to hang for decoration for Christmas in July or coastal Christmas. And I'm just going to weed out all of my letters. I even did like a little Santa hat on here um, just for fun right after the word Santa. And then to transfer that to our glitter paper, I just use my paper transfer paper. I get that on Amazon as well. Both of those things are available in my Amazon shop. I highly recommend both the vinyl and the transfer paper. And I am just going to transfer this over to our little glitter surfboard. I did notice my edges were not stuck great. So I'm going to put a little bit more Mod Podge down there. Any area that was starting to come up to secure that down and then just add my vinyl to it. You can kind of see through the paper enough to get it lined up correctly. And um, I'm just going to scrape that on with my scraper. And I was really kind of impressed with how well the vinyl stuck to the glitter paper. It was pretty easy to peel this off. Now, I think it's really cute like this. I am going to add a few more touches to it, though. I thought it needed some pops of red. So for the hanger, I'm going to use that red and white Baker's Twine from the Dollar Tree. I'm just using a little Cricut weeder to poke holes back in. And this time I'm going to be smart and I'm going to feed it in um, and tie it off at the top. That way it will hang easily. With a sign like this, I kind of like to do this method a little bit here rather than not in the front, just because that twine is so th thin. So I'm going to pull that around and do the same thing here on the other side. And just tie it above the sign. It gives a tiny pop of red with that um, baker's twine. And then I have a little bit of room left on each side of the sign. So I thought we would add a few more touches. I have one of those little life rings or life buoys from the fairy garden section at Dollar Tree. It's red and white. And I thought that would be a nice little touch over on one side of the surfboard. And then I also had some of these little gnome Christmas ornaments from Dollar Tree also in my gnome stash. <laughs> And so I'm just going to use one of those, I think, on the other side. They're nice and small. They look like Santa Claus. So I think that is going to work really well. I picked these up, I think, last year for Christmas, and I've never used them on anything, but they're super cute. So I'm just going to glue my little gnome ornament over here. And my little fairy garden life buoy to the other side. The nose on this one kind of looked like it was starting to come off a little bit. So I'm going to glue that down too. And this little surfboard sign was so easy to put together. And I think it's so cute for Christmas in July. I was trying to use a lot of summer items today. Things that you might be able to find like the flip flop signs, like the surfboard sign and stuff like that. And here it is, our little Gone to the Beach surfboard. I think it's so fun. 
And it was so easy to put together just using a little Cricut vinyl, some um, glitter cardstock from Dollar Tree, and a little surfboard sign. I like the little red and white touches. I think that definitely adds a little Christmas to it. I love to use blue for decorating with my Christmas decor, though. I think it looks so fun and coastal. Okay, the next DIY, I thought I picked up some of these little um, little children shapes um, at the, this is like the teacher section, I guess, at Dollar Tree. And I thought we could try to make those look like gingerbread men. And then um, I picked up like one of these like giant um, plastic trays they have this summer. Um, and I thought we could do something really fun on this. It's a nice blue color. So it reminded me of the pool. So I was thinking that we could have like gingerbread men floating in the pool, like baking in the sun instead of baking in the oven. But I wanted something to kind of make floaties with. And so I'm going to use a Dollar Tree placemat. I thought it would be a nice pop of red. And the texture is kind of cool on these. I think it kind of makes it look like it could be like a floaty. It could kind of also look like a towel if you wanted to do like a sandy background. You could do the same thing with um, a material that would look like towels behind them. But I picked out two of the little children shapes. They're shaped really similar to a gingerbread man, but their legs are a little bit longer than I would necessarily think a gingerbread man would be. So we'll modify them a little bit. So I'm just going to cut this down. Each one of the little floaties is going to be a little bit different, but they're also going to be kind of coordinated because they kind of have that like large white stripe across the top. And then we can like lay a little gingerbread man on top of each one. I kind of wanted to do a his and a hers. And so I'm just going to cut off the feet and part of the legs on these just to kind of make them look more like a gingerbread man and less like a child. So I'm going to do that on both of them. And they, the pack had like lots of different colors in them. This color kind of reminded me more of a gingerbread man. And so that is the one that we're going to use for this. Now they kind of have a glossy side. They kind of have more of a matte side. At first I was going to use the glossy side up like that, but I ended up changing it and using the other side, which was a little bit more, um, not quite so shiny. So I kind of want to angle them like that, like two um, floaties floating in the pool. So this is going to be my surface, this giant blue tray. I was really impressed with the size on this. Now it looks really plasticky because you know, it's plastic. So I'm also gonna need Mod Podge to attach to the floaties. So what I'm gonna do is just start by going over the entire top of the tray with matte Mod Podge from Dollar Tree. It's gonna take that shininess away from the plastic, uh, make it look a little bit more high end, but I'm also gonna need all that Mod Podge on there so I can start securing the floaties. I have lots of things that I need to kind of glue down on this. And so this is kind of my first layer of glue. So I'm gonna grab one of my floaties and kind of push that down in there. Mine were not the flattest, but we're gonna make this work. And as long as I can get it into contact with the Mod Podge, we can kind of make that like lay down. Now, um, I do like smooth them out. I didn't think I got quite enough Mod Podge on there to make them lay completely flat and be completely secure. So once I get them on there, I'm just gonna add a little bit more Mod Podge under them if I feel like it needs it. But then I'm just gonna start going over the top of it with more Mod Podge and kind of like pushing that down in the fabric to help secure that down. You know, it looks kind of white when you're doing it and you're thinking, oh, I don't know how this is gonna dry but I um, let mine dry overnight and it turned out completely clear. So just put Mod Podge, you know, everywhere where you kind of need it to secure that down. And again, I wanted to do pool, so that's why I'm kind of doing floaties, but these kind of look like beach towels too. So if you wanted to do like a background that was tan and sand, you could have do the same thing with gingerbread men like laying out on the beach or you could do it like I did and have them laying in the pool. So as you can see, I did have to, I, dry, I dried them and then I went in and added more Mod Podge if necessary to get those down and secure. 
So that was probably the hardest thing to attach. Once I got them on there, um, the project got really easy. So there's my little gingerbread men. I told you like that side was kind of glossy and the other side kind of um, was a little bit more matte. So I do end up using that side up like that is what I'm talking about for our two little gingerbread men. And I'm so glad I thought to use these because I have, <laughs> I do not want to get all my Christmas decor out. <laughs> And so I just do Mod Podge on the back of him and lay him down. I'm also going to Mod Podge all over the top of him. Help secure him down to the floaty. And I'm going to add like lots of beach fun decor to both of these, but I have to get them down and attached first. So a nice layer of Mod Podge here on the back. Lay him down. Or actually that's going to be our girl one and then Mod Podge over the top. So a lot of Mod Podge on this project, but I kind of needed to use Mod Podge because a lot of the things I wasn't really able to use hot glue on, it would kind of, I think, make more of a mess. So I just used my heat gun to help that dry. And once I got it on there, I felt like it wasn't super secure. So I did go over both of them with one more coat of Mod Podge. And everything seemed really well sealed down after this one. I don't think I'm going to have to worry about it coming apart. And as you can see, the shininess on the tray is way better now that we use that Mad Mod Podge on it as well. I'm just going to use a white paint pen and do two dots for each eye. A gingerbread face is so easy because it's just two dots for the eye and then like a little grin. So I'm just going to draw a little smile on here for her and for him. And then um, whenever I do my gingerbread men, I always like to do like the icing on the um, wrists and ankles. So I'm going to add those little details on here as well to kind of just make them look like gingerbread men a little bit more. And it's just like little squiggly up and down, super easy to do. Now that I've made them look like gingerbread men, I want to decorate them for a day at the pool. So I thought they needed swimsuits. So I'm going to use some of these felt sheets. I got this particular one um, at Easter, but they seem to be having a lot of felt now. Um, I kind of wanted to try to match the color of the tray. And this one is like that same beautiful color with like white polka dots. I thought about mixing it up maybe with like this color of blue for a little bit of contrast, but I really kind of liked that like mint green color of this one. So what I'm going to do is just cut down a little rectangle and we're going to make that into a pair of swim trunks for him. Just super easy. Again, this is made out of felt, so you can just cut it down. You're not going to have any fraying or anything like that. And so I cut it down like a little skinnier around the waist, kind of like veering out. I cut a little slit in between kind of make the shorts and not really removing any fabric down there and just enough to have a little gap between the bottom of the shorts. And I think those look about the right size. I don't want to use hot glue again because I don't want that soaking through my felt and being visible in the final project. So I coat the bottom of them with more Mod Podge. I also coat my gingerbread man with some Mod Podge and lay that down and let that dry. Then we can start working on her swimsuit. So I thought we would make the little gingerbread girl a bikini. I thought that'd be cute for her day at the pool. So I just cut a little, a smaller rectangle down and then just using her as reference, I kind of keep going back and forth and cutting out little swimsuit bottoms for her. They don't need to be quite as big as his trunk. So I kind of trim them down to size. And then I just need to cut like two triangles for the top of her bikini. So that looks like that's going to be about right for height. And so once I get one cut down, I just use that for reference and cut out a second one. I just cut off a little bit for her the sides that can kind of go around her a little bit and make that fit a little bit better. And then we're going to Mod Podge on her little bikini bottom here. And I try not to Mod Podge on top of the felt if I can help it. I kind of really want that to dry as clear as possible. 
I'm trimming down the sides of her bikini to make them look like they fit her a little bit better. And then I'm not gonna use any straps or anything, just the little triangles for the top of her bikini. And I just coat the back of them each with some Mod Podge and lay them on her. Are they looking like they're ready for the pool yet? Super cute. And I love the idea of gingerbread cookies laying out and getting all toasty here in the sand. I think it totally fits them. Now to kind of go with like the pool theme, I thought rope would be good to kind of finish off the edges of the tray, add a little bit more decor. So this is the thinner white rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna kind of frame out the entire tray. I plan to display this tray just like by leaning it up against something, sitting it on something. And so I'm not gonna have a hanger or anything like that. It's just gonna be kind of a standing decor tray. And I just use that same piece of white rope and I just do a bead of hot glue right there in the corner, pushing our rope in. And I think that looks really nice. I think it looks really coastal. I think it kind of goes with the pool theme as well. And just securing my fourth and final side there. Now I thought it needed like something like a pool, like toy or something like that. And I couldn't really find anything I had. So I'm gonna use one of these little Dollar Tree puzzles. And basically I just need a circle. I wanna try to see if I can paint that to make it look like a beach ball. Cause I wanted something flat that could kind of be floating in the pool, but I need to kind of draw on the structure of a beach ball. So I'm just using an ink pen. I probably should have used a pencil because I did have to work to cover up the ink pen. But basically you're gonna have like three white triangles and three color triangles with like a little circle, like kind of connecting them all together. So I kind of needed that for reference. Now three of the triangles are gonna be white. So I go in with my white paint pen and start coloring those in. One of the colors of a, you know, a traditional beach ball is yellow. So that works, I won't have to paint that section. And then one section is blue. I did have to use a couple coats to get the good blue coverage over the yellow without it looking green. And then one section is red. Now, I like that I used the yellow because it was easier for the blue and the red, but I did have to go over it with several coats of white to cover up the yellow. And that little circle in the middle, I also do in white. So I just keep doing coats on this until I get good coverage with my paint pen. But otherwise it was really easy to make this little beach ball. Once I get good coverage on my white, I do kind of want to outline it a little bit too, just to kind of give it a little bit more detail. So I use one of these little fine tip Sharpies. I've been finding a lot of these at Dollar Tree, all different colors. I love them for crafting. And then just drawing the lines on there and drawing the circle on there, just to provide a little bit more detail on my beach ball. And I think it turned out so cute. What do you guys think about that? And we could have a little beach ball like floating in the pool here, right in between them. I thought about adding a sign or some words to this, but I really didn't have a lot of extra space once I got them all on there. And I think they kind of speak for themselves. Little gingerbread men floating in the pool, perfect for Christmas in July. And this is how it turned out. Aren't they so cute? It was so easy to put together. And using the little paper child cutouts worked really well for little gingerbread men. And I love the size of that tray for $1.25. It makes a really large piece of decor that you can use for decoration. And I think kids would really enjoy this as well. It's so cute. And I have a surprise Crafty Beach giveaway today. The winner of my first contest did not claim her prize. So we're going to try again to actually give these away this time. What I have for you is 20 of the coral tree ornaments that I use so often on my channel to make gorgeous coastal Christmas DIYs. So it's 10 packages of two and I want to give them to one lucky winner that is watching today's video. So the only rules are you have to be 18, live in the continental United States, be subscribed to my channel, and comment the word coral somewhere in the comments below. Be creative and have some fun with it. And I will do the drawing on Wednesday. 
I will announce it on my YouTube community tab and in my Facebook page, my Facebook group, and I will respond to your individual comment with how to claim your prize. Good luck, and now let's get back to the Coastal Christmas DIYs. I picked up one of these little felt crabs at Dollar Tree in their summer section, and I have a couple of the long signs in white. Um, it doesn't matter what color they are or which ones they are because I'm going to cut the little cutout parts on it. I just wanted um, a sign that's going to be big enough for this crab to make a fun Christmas in July sign. So I took those to my saw and I just cut off the cutouts on these to make two long white board signs. Um, the white color on these is not great, so I'm going to have to go in and paint them anyway. That's why I said it doesn't really matter what color you do. Um, I'm going to flip them over though and go ahead and attach them together first. So I'm just going to make like a little palette board sign with these just using some popsicle sticks. And these Dollar Tree thin signs can be kind of bowed. Um, this one isn't quite really. Just trying not to burn myself there with the hot glue. Crisis averted. <laughs> And I'm just adding hot glue to the top and the bottom of each popsicle stick and bracing them on here. Um, better too many than not enough. So I'm just going to kind of do a total of seven, it looks like. Just kind of spacing those out on the back. And it gives me a little palette board sign that we can get started with for this crab DIY. Thought I was looking everywhere for a crab. I thought this would be great. And this crab sign from the Dollar Tree is perfect. It's a summer item that should be readily available and you can recreate. So I just use white acrylic to try to brighten this up. At first I used this white acrylic from Dollar Tree. Ah, oh, it's kind of like water. I just do not like their acrylic paint. I don't have a lot of luck and I found that it was not covering as good as I wanted it to. So I switched up to some regular white acrylic and just using a chunky brush, I'm just kind of distressing all over until I get a good coverage. That board had like a slight gray tint to it. And I really kind of wanted it to be white and not gray. And I'm also painting the popsicle sticks that you can kind of see from the back um, while I'm painting this white. I'm going to be using the back of my crab because I don't really want the glitter and stuff design that's on that. And I wanted to make a fun like Santa Claus sign um, because, you know, a crab has claws. I thought that'd be really fun, but I just kind of wanted a nice beachy background for this. And I'm not going to make this a hanging sign. I'm going to have it a stand up sign, but you could totally convert this really easily into a hanging sign if you drilled a couple holes in the top. So again, this is that crab sign. He has a little bit of glitter on him. And you could use that side if you wanted, but I kind of wanted a blank canvas crab. So I'm gonna use the back of it like that. So um, it's, as you can see, it's almost the perfect size with two of those boards together with a little bit of space in between them to house our little crab here. And so I am just gonna do a layer of Mod Podge all over the sign that we just made. And nice and thick, cause this is kind of a big felt piece that we're trying to attach here. And again, I think the Mod Podge is going to work better than hot glue. I don't want it soaking through my fabric and it worked just fine. You could probably also use tacky glue from Dollar Tree um, to attach it. You just want something that's not gonna soak through and be like visible from the front of it. I do have a few holes there in the top of the crab from the hanger, and I will disguise those a little later in the project, but basically I just kind of wanted a blank um, crab like that. So that's one reason I wanted to use the back of it because I wanted to go with my Cricut. And again, I'm using matte white vinyl from the Dollar Tree, and I will share this Cricut cut file with you as well if you want to recreate this. And what I have it saying is here comes Santa Claus, but for Claus, I spelled it C-L-A-W-S for the crab. I thought that would be really cute. Um, I couldn't decide between here comes Sandy Claus or here comes Santa Claus. And I ended up doing Santa, but you could also do here comes Sandy Claus because that would be funny as well. 
and I am just gonna weed my vinyl here. And I wasn't so sure, I've never really done um, vinyl on felt before, but it actually is stuck really well. So I think it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna use my paper transfer paper to attach it, just peeling off the back of this vinyl. And then we can just attach that to the front of our crab. So here's our sign. I did cut it down to fit here. And this is one reason why I didn't want like the glitter in the face and stuff on there. I just want the shape of the red crab. And I think this looks so fun for Christmas. I can't wait to display this one. It turned out so cute and it's nice and large too. So here is me applying the vinyl. You can see how well it's stuck. It did a really great job and such a fun way to make a really large Christmas in July DIY. Now, I probably should have done this before I attached the crab, but I decided I kind of wanted it to look like sand on the bottom board um, where the crab is standing. And so I'm using kind of like a dark tan and a chunky brush from Dollar Tree. And as you can see, I'm just daubing down a light distress of like that dark tan. So we can kind of simulate a little bit of a sandy bottom to this sign. And I'm glad I did this. It's really kind of an abstract sign, but I just add some ivory to that same color to give me like a lighter tan. And then I go in and do the same thing in all the same areas. And I'm only doing the bottom board sign, but I do like the effect that it gave me. I was just trying to not get any on my red felt. So I could only get so close to it because I was afraid I was gonna get some on my felt. That's why it's probably better to do this before you add your crab. But then I go in with white to kind of, you know, blend it, kind of make it look a little bit more um, like sand. And then I went in with a tiny brush just to get a little closer to all the little crab legs on there with all of those existing colors. Just to kind of make like, like make it look like I did not do that as an afterthought, even though I kind of did. But I like that. It gave me a nice sandy bottom, like our little crab is standing in the sand. And so then I thought sand, you probably need some seashells too. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of seashells that I have from the beach and kind of scatter those out on my sign. Just here on the bottom, I think three is gonna be plenty. Whenever I hot glue these shells, I just try to do like a very light amount around the top rim and then a little at the base because um, I don't really want any like hot glue visible. I really just need enough to secure it on there. And that kind of works with any kind of shell that you're going to use. So I did like one little shell on each side and then also a little shell here on the bottom. And like I said before, I'm going to make this a standing sign, something that I can sit on my shelf. And so to do that, I'm just going to use a little piece of craft wood. Um, I just need something heavy enough to kind of stand it up. And let me show you how I attach this to make a great standing sign. I just use hot glue on the side of the craft wood and I glue that down. Now I make sure I leave a tiny lip on the bottom of that sign um, before the little brace. So that way it will slightly lean back a little bit and it will sit properly on my shelf and it won't wanna tip over or anything like that. So I'm showing you about how much room I left just a tiny bit, just enough for it to slightly sit back like that so it will stand securely. And I think this looks really cute. The only thing I still need to do on there is to cover those little holes on the top of my crab because that kind of bothered me. I kind of wanted to do a little Santa hat for him, but I didn't really have a lot of room there to do that. So I'm just gonna use some of that red and white Baker's twine and just tie a simple little bow for that. Um, I thought that would work as a decoration, but you know what? It's also going to cover up those pesky holes. So I think that looks good. And I am just going to hot glue that on there onto like the biggest hole here in the center. And that will kind of disguise the other little hole there as well. And it provided a nice little decoration there for the top of our crab. Put a little Santa hat on there would be super cute too. If you wanted to try to make one. 
But I think this DIY turned out so cute. What do you guys think about my little Santa Claus? It's totally coastal. It's totally summer and it's so much fun. I'm so glad I decided to do like the sandy texture on the bottom. I think that looks really cool. You could even do that on both boards if you wanted to, or you could do the top board instead of white. You could do it like in an ocean blue. That'd be really cute as well. But I think he turned out really cute. And I really liked using the vinyl on the felt because a lot of times they have those felt items at Dollar Tree and you don't really know what to do with them, right? Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my private Facebook group. I have it linked in the description below this video. We'd love to see you over there. You can find out when I post new videos and get to see what everyone's been making. I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube and I'd love to see you over there. Okay, back to the DIYs. We're gonna use a party hat from the Dollar Tree, some of the green grass skirts from the summer section, and some of the green Cricut vinyl. And we're gonna do a kind of a Hawaii, kind of tropical version of Christmas with these. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut off the tinsel on the party hat. This is one of those giant party hats from the party section at Dollar Tree. So it's gonna make a really nice sized Christmas tree. It's just kind of a matter of getting the tinsel off. Now they use like a really strong glue there on the bottom tinsel. So I usually end up just cutting that section off. It makes it a little bit easier. I went ahead and unfolded mine as well because I wanna cover it up with green. So it'll kind of be hidden behind the grass skirt and you won't see all this polka dot design. So. I am just cutting right inside the glue line there. It's just gonna make that easier and, and it doesn't make the tree too much shorter. Now, I was inspired to make this Christmas tree DIY by our trip to Hawaii. I thought it was a really fun idea. I thought I could make a Christmas tree out of the little lays. And they have the green ones. They have like, you know, the straw colored ones. You could do either one, but I'm gonna do the green one today. Um, a lot of times my Dollar Trees don't sell out of those and I can still get them in the winter sometimes. So you might be able to find them. Mine usually kind of move them to the party section at my stores. But I thought it would be easier to cover the party hat with this green um, Cricut vinyl from Dollar Tree than it would be to paint it. So I had this and it was almost the exact right color. So I thought we would give it a go. Um, I am just going to peel off the backing and lay my party hat on there to recover it. Now, this is probably one of the best uses for Cricut vinyl. Um, I love crafting with it, but I don't necessarily like using it in my Cricut machine because it always sticks to um, my mat and just makes a big old mess. <laughs> I really wish they would work on the backing sheet. I don't think the vinyl itself is that bad, but oh man. I have so much trouble with it. I know lots of you guys do as well. So what I'm doing is just gonna trim off all the extra vinyl. I do wanna kinda leave these tabs and stuff on there so that I can put my little Christmas tree back together. And I don't know if it's cause this is a bigger um, Christmas hat or what, but this is probably a lot sturdier than the smaller one that I've used to make Christmas trees. So now I'm just gonna kinda cut my holes back in there so I can have some little slots so we can put this together. And as you can see, I even covered like my tabs with the vinyl. It's just a matter of popping those back in the slots. And again, I just did that to kinda disguise um, the bright pattern that was on the party hat so you won't be able to see it through my grass skirt. And this is the child size grass skirt. I got this one because I thought it would be a little shorter, but you know what? It doesn't really matter because you could always trim it to size. So let me show you how I'm gonna put this together. The first thing I did was kind of measure length to see if it was too long. And it is a little bit too long, so even the child size I'm gonna have to trim. So I went ahead and trimmed like one piece and then before I go ahead and put it together, I thought I would give the entire grass skirt a bit of a haircut. So I'm just going to continue that line straight across to trim this. And we can start wrapping this. 
I'm also going to, I want them to stay connected, but I don't really need this whole waistband. So I'm just gonna trim that part off, just leaving about a half an inch to an inch of fabric just to keep it all together. And then it's just a matter of wrapping our party hat with the grass skirt. And we're gonna have to wrap it a lot to make it nice and full. So I start with a little bit of hot glue right here on the tip and just start there. And this turned out so tropical and fun. Um, Hawaii inspired lots of my DIYs here on my channel. So beautiful, we had such a great time there. We went there to celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary. And uh, we went to the big island for a week and it was absolutely amazing. We loved it. So I am just wrapping and wrapping, um, just pulling it tight. I don't really have to glue again until I get to the very end. And that's how full it looks with one grass skirt. Now I'm just gonna go around and kind of trim it up a little bit here if any of the pieces were a little bit longer than they should be. I don't really want it like dragging on the ground or sticking out from the side. And as you can see with one grass skirt, you totally can um, still kind of see um, the green um, party hat behind it. And so I think it's gonna require more than one. Now to make this tip even tighter, I decided to kind of cinch it up with just a little twine to tie it tight and kind of close up the top of it. See, this is what it looks like at this point. So you could kind of get away with one skirt if you wanted, but I wanted a super fluffy grass skirt. I didn't really want you to be able to see the party hat behind it at all. So we're gonna use the second one that I had bought for it. And I saved a little piece that I cut off so I can go ahead and trim this one down to size before we start wrapping it. And then again, I'm just gonna cut the waistband off, all of that before I even unfold it, makes it even easier. So we're gonna start at the top again, and basically we're gonna repeat the process by hot gluing that right there, um, um, right next to the twine that we used to tie it off. And then we're just gonna simply wrap this around again. And once I have two grass skirts on there, it just made it so full and fluffy, and then we can decorate it even more. And I'm glad I decided to do two. I think it kind of really needed it. I'm curious to see what this would look like with like, you know, the straw colored grass skirts from the Dollar Tree. I think that would be really beautiful too. I might have to try that DIY. So I'm using the entire grass skirt again. We're just gonna simply have to hot glue it again to kind of close it off here at the top. And you can see how much fuller it is. I just kind of brush it out a little bit, kind of, you know, see how long they're gonna be. And then I can kind of trim them up too, if any of them are longer than the others. And I think that just kind of depends on how it gets wrapped. But as you can see, it's so full now. You can't see the party hat behind it, so I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna kind of cinch it up again at the very tip of our Christmas tree, just by doing some hot glue, kind of pinching it together there, trying to close up the gap there on the very top. Now, this is what we're gonna decorate our Christmas tree with, these poinsettias, very Hawaiian. Um, they're white, they have a little touch of glitter, green in the middle. I think they're not gonna be very that colorful. You know, you could do like a brighter hibiscus or something like that too, if you wanted like a bright pop of color, but I kind of wanted more of a neutral, like white flower like this, and so, kind of seeing how it's gonna look on our little grass skirt Christmas tree, and I'm digging it. So I just pulled the flowers off the ends of them and just left the little green tips on there, and I'm just putting a dot of hot glue and gluing that down into my grass skirt. Kind of glues it, you know, to wherever it kind of sticks, the, either the grass skirt. I want it all to be a little bit flexible. And I'm just scattering them around kind of in a random pattern. Um, I want there to be kind of equal coverage all around with the little poinsettias. And I love how these turned out, that white poinsettia against the green grass skirt, so tropical and beautiful. And I used two packages of these um, to have enough flowers to go all over. This is a pretty um, like medium size, I would say, Christmas tree decoration, because that party hat was pretty large. 
And look how beautiful it is looking. I love it, so fun. Now I wanted to make kind of a fun little tree topper and I picked up this little flamingo sign at Dollar Tree, but I'm just going to borrow the flamingo. I thought we could make a really pretty like tree topper with this because I thought flamingo would totally go with the grass skirt vibe. Then I was trying to figure out how exactly I'm gonna attach this because he's got like these long legs and stuff like that. So I decided to ditch the legs. We'll just keep the flamingo body. It'll make it look like he's sitting down, right? <laughs> like that. I thought that would be easier. And then I was like, you know, it probably needs something else. What do I have? So I'm going to put a couple of things together. The first thing I wanted to do was paint it though. I'm just using like a pink parfait um, color to kind of cover up that bright pink glitter. And again, I wanted to paint the back of it because it was just unfinished on the back. So I kind of wanted it to be consistent. And I really kind of wanted like this shade of pink rather than the hot pink. I did take a couple of coats to cover up all that glitter and stuff like that, but it was pretty easy to paint. Then I picked up this starfish at like my local um, flea market and these are actually pretty inexpensive. And I thought this would make a really pretty tree topper. I guess you could always use the starfish from the Dollar Tree if you have that. But I thought I would just put my little flamingo right on top by gluing it on top of the starfish like that. And then I can lay the starfish flat like that on the very top of the tree where it kind of like goes out in all directions, which is a little different than you would normally attach like a starfish to as a tree topper but I think it actually worked really well like this. So I just attached the whole thing with hot glue. We have a little custom tree topper with a flamingo, a fun little starfish. We have a green grass skirt. We have hibiscus flowers. It really all came together really nicely. And it's so whimsical and fun because again, these DIYs that we're doing right now, I went for tropical Christmas. And this is how it turned out. The little grass skirt Christmas tree. I think it turned out really pretty and I can't wait to decorate with it again this year. What do you guys think about this one? I think it's really fun. Never seen it before. Okay, the next DIY, we're going to do Santa's sleigh. I picked up this one at Target Dollar Spot for $5, but you know what? You can find sleighs a lot of places, including the thrift store. Um, they seem to be pretty common anymore. I wanted to go ahead and take like the skis off of mine so I can kind of paint those, do what I want with them. Right now they were black, but I didn't think that seemed very tropical. So let's go ahead and paint them green. I have a green acrylic, um, it's called Christmas green color. And I thought that'd be really pretty because I wanted to kind of continue the green and pink pattern. And I have a really fun idea instead of reindeer to pull this sleigh. I found some items at the Dollar Tree that I think would work perfect. Now, Spray paint would probably work better if you had the right color, but I didn't, so I am just using the acrylic and a foam brush, and it was really pretty easy to paint this. I am gonna leave the wood sleigh wood. I think that's really pretty. I love those items from the dollar spot at Target. Um, really cute items. So this is what we're gonna decorate it with though, a little Dollar Tree sign. This one says season greetings. I think they also have one that says Merry Christmas. Either one would be great. And then I'm using that same like pink parfait color and a makeup sponge. And we're just going to give this a quick paint job here. That way the wooden sleigh is going to have like green skis. It's going to have a pink sign on the side. So it's totally going to go with our pink and green tropical Christmas vibe. I like these little cutout signs like this. I think they're really pretty. You just have to make sure you don't get any um, drops down inside the words because you want to, of course, still be able to read that. And it's just a matter of reattaching this. And I'm so glad I decided to take it off before I painted it and made painting it so much easier than some of these that I've done in the past. And I'm not sure what the sleigh looks like at Dollar Spot this year. I don't think I've bought one there this year. 
I know they have a basket one. They have so much Christmas stuff this year at Target Dollar Spot. I was quite impressed. Well, we're going to hot glue the little season's greeting side to the side of our sleigh just like that. And I always kind of struggle with to put my sleighs. I like to do mine with flowers though, what I usually do. So that's what we're gonna do. So I picked up a floral block from Dollar Tree and I am just gonna try to cut that down to size. This is the one that's kind of all one piece and it's the perfect width, um, but it was a little taller than I wanted. So I'm gonna kind of cut it in half and make it skinnier. I love using that foam from the Dollar Tree because it's really easy to carve. And to go in it, we're gonna continue with the poinsettia theme. These are also from Dollar Tree, but as you can see, these are a lot bigger, um, really high quality. And I'm just gonna kind of cut them off kind of short so that I can put those down in the floral foam and fill this up. I guess you could always fill it up with little miniature presents too if you wanted, but I kind of wanted to continue that tropical floral vibe like we had with the grass skirt Christmas tree. So I'm just trying to fill that completely up. I don't think I'm gonna need all of them. I have one left over. Now I told you I had a really fun idea for something that's gonna be able to pull the sleigh and this is them. I found these little light up pink flamingos at Dollar Tree and I found these last year at Dollar Tree. So I don't know if you're still gonna be able to find these, but they turned out so cute. I still wanted to show you in case you have some left over or if you're lucky enough to find them. They even light up. Some of them wanted to be a little finicky on me, but I was able to get them all light up. And I usually try to test those in the stores because Dollar Tree Electronics can fail you sometimes. But I thought it would be so cute. I picked up five of these to make little reindeer to pull that tropical sleigh. But I wanna give them more of a reindeer touch than just, um, you know, flamingos. So we are gonna kind of DIY these guys. Now the first one of course needs to be Rudolph. So instead of just the black tip on the little flamingo nose, I wanted to make this one look like Rudolph too. So I painted it white first to kind of cover up that dark color. Then I'm gonna go back in with some bright red to give our lead uh, little flamingo a little Rudolph red nose. I thought that would be really funny. And then since they're gonna be our little faux reindeer, I also wanted to find a way to kind of make them feel more like reindeer. And to do that, I'm gonna use those great ornaments that I'm giving away in the drawing today. These are the little coral ornaments. Um, I thought these would make really great antlers. We could make these look like little reindeer. So let me show you how I did that. Now these are made out of plastic, so they're fairly easy to break, even with just your hands like that. So I kind of just grabbed a branch and pushed it back and forth until I kind of popped it off. And so they're all gonna be a little bit different, but I think they kind of look like, you know, like reindeer antlers. Um, I know they also have like the antlers um, ornaments from Dollar Tree. Those are gonna be a little bigger though. And these flamingos are not that big. So I wanted kind of a smaller option. And these little tree ornaments worked out really well for that. Now, it's easier to kind of take off the outer ones. Once I got to like the body of the coral, I wasn't able to get them off. So it did require a couple to um, be able to get this mini little antlers. And it's just a matter now of attaching them. I thought a little drop of hot glue, I probably should have used my like fine tip hot glue gun because um, this one kind of puts out a lot of hot glue, but we're gonna make it work. And anytime you kind of hot glue plastic on plastic, you definitely have to kind of hold it, um, give it a chance to set up, but it totally will work. And there's our first little reindeer flamingo. Aren't these adorable? This is why I still had to show you. Hopefully you can still find some of these or you were able to pick some up because this is one of my favorite coastal Christmas DIYs. I just think they turned out so whimsical and fun. Now they are covered with like that white glittery stuff. So I don't really mind that. I think that's gonna give them a little bit of sparkle. 
and our flowers and our sleigh already had a bit of sparkle. It's just a matter of gluing the rest of these on and we will have our entire set of little flamingos to, ca to carry the sleigh. And if you could get more than five, that would be super cute too. Doesn't really matter. Even like one or three would look cute too if that's all you can find. But this is how it turned out. Our little Target dollar spot sleigh with the green sleighs with the little pink season's greetings filled with Dollar Tree white hibiscus being pulled along. I didn't do any strings or anything like that. I just kind of set them in the pattern that would be little reindeer. Um, flamingos, super fun. And this is how it looks all together. I had so much fun with this one. Super cute and tropical. Now I told you that Hawaii was my inspiration for these tropical Christmas DIYs and we're going to kind of continue that on with these. The first thing we're going to use is this little tray I found at Target Dollar Spot last year for $5. It's shaped like a Christmas tree. It's going to be part of the structure and it's green, but it's not really going to be the whole thing. So you can totally pull this off without it. The other item we're going to use is this little Dollar Tree tinsel tree. I thought this was just about the right size, but you know, you could use the more traditional tinsel trees they have there too. That would probably work well. And I'm gonna remove all the tinsel and stuff from this. I just wanted a tree cage. It doesn't necessarily have to be this one though. I just had this one in my Christmas stash. So I thought we would craft with it. And the Hawaiian inspiration on this is we are going to use Dollar Tree Lays to make a little lay Christmas tree. I have some pink lays left over from summer and I thought they would be really fun and tropical. Now the only thing about these little tinsel cages is sometimes they don't want to stay together once you take the tinsel off. So you might need to go back in and kind of glue yours back together. But I was just trying to pop mine back together and reinforce it with a little hot glue so they don't keep falling apart. And I'm simply going to wrap the little um, tree structure with the Dollar Tree Lays. These are the big fluffy pink ones. You could probably use about whatever you have, but I think the bigger lay like this with a bigger flower on it, it's gonna work even better. So it's just a matter of trying to figure out how to make this work. I thought it would be easier to have it be a string instead of a circle. So I went ahead and cut mine down, trying to make sure not to let the flowers fall off. And I'm just going to simply hot glue um, the string. I did go ahead and knot it to kind of keep them on there because as you can see, they did kind of want to jump off on me. I just tied um, that little plastic piece in place to kind of be a spacer. And this kind of has a hole in the top of the tree. So I kind of took advantage of it and just put that down right inside to attach it. And then I'm simply wrapping the Christmas tree with the pink lay. Isn't that fun? And this like lay does kind of have a little bit of a stand on it, as you can see. I'm just gonna tie this one off right here at the base since I have the string available. And then, you know, some of the little pink flowers did fall off so I can kind of go back in and hot glue those as needed to kind of fill in the rest of my Christmas tree. And it's not a very cone shape, you know, because it's got all these flowers and stuff like that, which is one reason why I'm putting it in that little tree tray that I got at Target Dollar Spot to kind of continue that Christmas tree shape. But I don't really need the stand on it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it off. Um, these are made out of plastic, so pretty easy to cut. So I just cut mine down with a pair of heavy duty scissors. So my tree is a little bit shorter and I only had one of those little Christmas lays so I really couldn't cover the rest of it with that. Um, and that's why I, you know, you could totally use the other tinsel Christmas tree they have at Dollar Tree. It is, doesn't have a stand and it's a little bit easier to shorten like this if you want to recreate. I thought we could just sit it inside the little tree um, tray like that. I thought that was a fun use of the tray. And then to continue like the tropical coastal version, I'm gonna glue one of the little Dollar Tree starfish to the top of the tree tray. And that continues our green and pink and white theme with a little touch of wood on the tray below. 
super tropical and fun. Now I was trying to decide if I had enough room for the um, lay tree to have like a tree top or two. And I decided to make mine a tiny bit taller with some of those extra flowers that came off to kind of give it more of a point to the top of my little lay tree. And then I wanted to bring in a little flamingo and I actually had some little flamingo drinksters. I picked these up in the summer at Dollar Tree because you never know when you're gonna need a pink flamingo, right? Even for Christmas. They're made out of plastic, so I simply just pop the little drinkster off and I'm gonna hot glue mine on this to the top of my little pink lay Christmas tree. And this one's just gonna have a couple different tree toppers. It can have the pink flamingo and it can also have the starfish because they're kind of two separate trees, but I think they work together and a super fun use for that little tree tray because some of those trays like that from the Target Dollar Spot I, not, I don't really know how to decorate them too well. And I thought this was a fun idea. So here it is, our little lay Christmas tree. Very pink and tropical. Definitely reminds me of Hawaii. I did get a real lay when I was there and I felt so tropical wearing it. <laughs> but it kind of was really kind of heavy, like a lot of flowers hanging around your neck. But I think this is really fun. Okay, next DIY, I picked up a green frame from Dollar Tree and some of their Christmas window clings. And look what I found on there. It says, dreaming of a pink Christmas and a little snow globe with a flamingo. So just asking to be part of this tropical Christmas DIY. And I thought this green frame from the Dollar Tree would be perfect because I wouldn't even have to paint it. I love crafting with window clings from the Dollar Tree. They're so easy. You don't have to break out your Cricut or anything like that. You can just kind of go with the flow. Now I thought I could just kind of take that paper off but it was kind of glued on as you can see. So I tried to peel the paper off because I do want to use the back of the frame um, for the picture frame but now I kind of need to mask it a little bit. So I'm just going to use a piece of cardstock, nothing fancy and cover where the paper kind of got tore off there and it's going to give me just a plain white background. It's kind of a heavy duty board to the back of those little green frames and so I definitely wanted to keep that if I could. So I just kind of cut that down to size and then we can cover up the ripped part there on the sign. I kind of got it peeled as good as I can. I'm just going to put a coat of Mod Podge down and then we can glue the, um, I always use too much Mod Podge. Then we can glue the cardstock onto it. I always kind of squirt out the Mod Podge and think it's the same consistency of my acrylic paint that I'm constantly using, but it's totally thinner and that's why I always end up with too much Mod Podge. But I just lay that on there and now we have a plain white sign that's gonna go in that green frame. So we can just now use the decal of the little pink flamingo. How cute is this? And again, using some more Mod Podge, we can just glue the window cling down to the sign. Whenever I see like these little colorful signs from the Dollar Tree, I always try to pick them up because they work great. I'm gonna use mine for cabinet decorations, but they're great for like um, tear trays and stuff like that as well. And this would be super cute on that. And look at that cute little dreaming of a pink Christmas. It's absolutely perfect for these DIYs. I seal the top of it with Mod Podge too to seal down that window cling and make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And just leaving that plain white background, I think that's going to be great because again, we are doing green, pink, and white for this set of Coastal Christmas DIYs where um, I put all these tropical DIYs together in a cabinet and I'll show you how they all end up looking together too. They're so fun. And I sealed it with another layer to kind of kind of cover up the glitter and to make sure that it was going to stay on there. And then I can just pop it back in. I don't think I had my top up, but it doesn't really matter because we're just going to kind of have this stand in my decorations. And this is how it looks dreaming of a pink Christmas. Super cute. And that green frame is nice and bright. I really like the green and pink combination. It's kind of a fun surprise and I know you guys love it when I craft with pink flamingos. This is how it turned out and this is how it looks in my cabinet with this tropical Christmas display.
Isn't that flamingo so cute wearing a little hat and scarf? I love it. Very whimsical and very fun Christmas decoration. Okay, the next one, look at this cute little pink flamingo. I've seen these before at Target Dollar Spot, but I actually got this one at Dollar Tree. It's in with like their home decor section. You never kind of know what you're going to find in there, but I was lucky enough to find the pink flamingo one. And I thought we could make that a tree display. So I picked up one of these little bottle brush trees for a dollar at Target Dollar Spot. And I thought I could just pop it right inside instead of a little miniature plant. We could have a pink flamingo Christmas tree. And um, I don't think you can get much easier than that. The pink flamingo, what's his name, Frazier, um, was good to go right out of the box. And so is my cute little tree. But I did decide that I wanted to have a tree topper. And I'm going to use one of the little teeny tiny starfish. I get these on Amazon. I do have them linked under Beach Essentials, I think, um, in my Amazon shop below. I love these things. And I want to give it a touch of green because we've been using green and pink, right? So I'm using some green, Christmas green acrylic. And I'm just going to paint both sides of my starfish. Being careful because they are kind of delicate because they are real little starfish. And I thought that would be the perfect little teeny tiny tree topper for our little bottle brush tree. And we continue, continue that green, white, and pink theme for this cabinet. So I just do a little dot of hot glue on the very tip. And it's such a small tree, I'm not going to bother with um, ornaments or anything like that. I thought this kind of looked super cute as is. If you can find the pink, little pink flamingo planter, definitely snag it. It's a find. And this is how it looks together with my tropical Christmas decorations. Isn't he so cute? The one that I found at Target Dollar Spot um, might not really be a pink flamingo, but it kind of looks like a pink swan. <laughs> but this one's definitely a pink flamingo, and I love it. Okay, the next tropical Christmas decoration is super easy. I just picked up a Dollar Tree wood round and a Dollar Tree Christmas gift bag and some of their hibiscus garland. This one looks so tropical and it's just exactly what we're going for. It's got like the tropical um, poinsettias um, that we've been using. It says Christmas wishes. It's a perfect size for one of those Dollar Tree wood rounds. And I'm going to show how easy it is to make a Christmas sign out of one of their gift bags. I love crafting with their gift bags at Dollar Tree, especially their Christmas ones. So as you can see, I just cut the front off my bag. It's just going to give me like a giant sheet of decorated paper. For my Dollar Tree wood round, we're just going to go ahead and pop the hanger off to get it out of the way and some of the image will be cut off but it's totally okay we're gonna get the gist of it on the sign and you kind of want it to be a little bit bigger and we are just gonna simply mod podge this on i'm gonna mod podge it on before we cut it down to size just um, so i can get a perfect cut around the edges on this and I won't have to worry about trying to get it on there just right. But this paper is kind of thick from the gift bag. So I did do a rather thick coat of Mod Podge all over. So I want it to be secure everywhere and stay on there because this is going to be a hanging sign. It's a hanging sign, but I'm actually going to hang it in my cabinet that we did all of these tropical Christmas decorations for. So I'll show you how that all turned out. I am just using a paper towel to make sure that everything is nice and secure around the edges. I want to get that dry so that I can go in and cut it down to size. I tried really hard to kind of get it centered on there and I'm also kind of creasing around the edges so I know exactly where that edge is. And then I just go in with this sanding block from Dollar Tree and sand off the excess paper. And as you can see, you get a perfect cut. No having to cut circles or anything like that involved. <laughs> I'm terrible at cutting circles for some reason. <laughs> I think they're hard. And I think that looks really good. Now I am going to seal it just by doing Mod Podge over the top of it as well. Um, again, I used a little bit too much Mod Podge. But I wanted to make sure that it was sealed and kind of looked more like a sign and less like paper. 
And then we are gonna actually decorate this with that pink hibiscus garland from Dollar Tree to kind of add more pink to it. It's already got a little bit of pink on it, pinks and reds, but I thought we would continue that tropical flower pattern by actually adding flowers to the sign. I thought that'd be really fun. But first I need to reattach my hanger. So I'm just kind of pop, popping um, that back through the paper bag. And now it's ready to decorate. Aren't these pink hibiscus um, garland from the Dollar Tree so pretty? I thought this would totally go with my bright pink vibe that we've been using for the flamingos. And I am just actually gonna glue it to the sign itself Whenever you kind of have to cut the stem off, they kind of fall apart as you can see, but that's okay. You can kind of just glue all the pieces back together and that's what I'm doing. I'm just gluing the flower pieces on there and then gluing the center back in there. That way I can have them nice and flat up against the sign so they'll be a little bit more flush um, than if I would have left the tips on there. Then I thought, you know what? I have the greenery from the garland. I might as well use that too. That's gonna go with the green and pink tropical vibes. So I'm just gonna kind of glue that around wherever they kind of have leaves on there. Some with the flowers, some not, but otherwise you can still read where it says Christmas wishes. And I thought this was really whimsical and fun and really easy to do with a Dolly Tree wood round and Christmas gift bag. I love those hibiscus flowers. I always try to pick those up as well year round whenever I see them because I think they're so beautiful. But I actually hung on the back of my cabinet to kind of set the stage for my tropical Christmas DIYs. And I think it turned out really pretty and kind of ties everything together. What do you guys think about my little Christmas wishes sign? Oh, thank you so much for watching today. I really had a great time putting all these together. This is how all of my tropical Christmas ornaments look together that we just DIY'd. And I'm gonna have a final reveal to show you everything we DIY'd today. Be sure to enter that giveaway um, so you can win some coral ornaments to DIY with yourself. And good luck. Don't forget to like this video, comment your favorite DIY below, and please subscribe. We're trying to grow the Crafty Beach channel. Enjoy the final reveal. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Santa's coming to visit No, he wouldn't miss this In Christmas times Oh, and the sun said it is just getting better On a blanket with the skyline painted in blue Ooh, yeah, that's what we do We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Santa's gonna come and join us in this song oh, yeah.
for watching and I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my crafty beach bum members for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Thank you to Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Vernon Noctegal, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Winnie Harrison, Maria Grace, Butterfly Mama, Donna Schreiner, and Tina Kane. Thank you so much for supporting me here on YouTube. I appreciate you so much. If you would like to um, become a member, all you have to do is hit the join button underneath this YouTube video. And again, it's $4.99 a month. And it's kind of like a little tip for your favorite YouTube creator. And I would really appreciate it. Okay, if you would like to watch more YouTube videos by Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting and Merry Christmas.